subliminal perception, the processing of sensory information that occurs below the lineman. That is this level of conscious awareness. To study subliminal perception, researchers typically present with a word or photograph very quickly, usually 1 20th of a second. It is then followed by the stimulus with another stimulus pattern of dots or lines, which blocks out mental processing of subliminal stimulus. Participants cannot directly identify the content of the stimulus through investigation, though subliminal trigger its emotions by exposing participants to words related to anger. These people are hostile. Another study found that participants with words such as saint or church were less likely to cheat on a different task. Just because someone is a subject to subliminal perception doesn't mean you will succumb to subliminal persuasion. Specific words or brands do not influence choices. One of the articles we read was, what you expect is what you believe, but not necessarily what you get, a test of the effectiveness of subliminal self-help audio tapes. In the study, the researchers wanted to understand how effective subliminal tapes truly were. They had a group of 78 individuals ranging in age from 18 to 61. They randomly gave the participants tapes that were either advertised to improve memory or self-esteem, and told the participants that they received one of these tapes, regardless of, if, regardless of if they did or not. Before the participants started to listen to the t tapes, the researchers had them take a pretest to see how much the participants' memory and self-esteem improved. Then the participants were required to listen to the tapes at least once a day for five weeks. The findings of this experiment were that the subliminal self-help tapes did not have an effect on participants as they were advertised to. Although the tapes did not work, participants believed that they did. Individuals who received memory tapes believed their memory improved, and those who were told they received self-esteem tapes believed their self-esteem would improve. Another study we read to better understand the effectiveness of subliminal persuasion is Effectiveness of Subliminal Messages in Television Commercials, Two Experiments. In this study, participants were asked to watch messages in a video, the words choose this. In some videos, the message was undetectable. In other vi videos, the message was detectable. In some videos, had no message at all. After watching the videos, researchers had the participants rate how positively they felt about the ad. In the first experiment, participants rated videos the same regardless of if there was a message in the video or not. In the second experiment, participants received rewards for noting if there was a message in the video or not. In this experiment, participant, participants rated the ads higher when there was a detected message. Undetected messages in the videos were not rated higher than videos without messages. The difference between our study and these past two studies is that we specifically want to examine the placebo effect of subliminal messages. So if a person is told that there is a message Will they act as if there is a message or not? We are going to have a sample group of 200 students who have volunteered in the Santa Clara University population. These students will be given a $5 gift card for their time. They will be randomly assigned into four different groups. Two of these groups will not be told that there is a subliminal message within the video. The other two groups will merely be told that the video while they are watching will have a paid promotion. Of the two groups who are told there will be a paid promotion, only one will receive a subliminal message. The other group will not. Of the two groups who were not told there was a subliminal message, one of them will actually receive a subliminal message. The control and treated groups will see the ad at different times or in different places. Therefore, they should not interact with each other. The ads should be of a product that consumers are familiar with, but the ad itself is one that they have not seen. For our experiment, the product that we are showing them will be Coke. In order to get an ad that they have not seen, we are going to take a Coke ad from a foreign country. That way, the students will be familiar enough with the product, the Coke, but not so much with the ad so they won't be conditioned to ignore it. After showing the ad, the group will take a break and allow the subjects to get snacks. Coke and water will be offered. The point is to see how many of them want to choose the Coke and whether or not they receive the subliminal message. We must make sure that the subjects do not talk about the ad during break. The break will be short, a short five-minute break, so they do not have time to talk or converse. After the break, we are going to ask them questions about how they feel about the ad to assess whether they feel negatively or positively. 
An additional way we tried to control the variables of the experiment is the use and offering of water versus coke. We did this because subliminal messaging does not work brand specifically, so it cannot make a person choose Pepsi over Coke. In reality, certain companies may have exclusive deals with brands to sell their brand. For example, on Santa Clara, we do not offer Pepsi products, we offer Coke products, so there will never be a situation in which the student chooses Pepsi over Coke. Another example is in a the movie theater, they only sell Coke or Pepsi, not both. The independent variable is whether they received the ad and whether they are not whether or not they were told they got an ad. The dependent variable is whether they took the coke or not. Our hypothesis was that we believe that the placebo effect will have an effect on a person's choice to get a drink or not, but we also believe that the subliminal message will have a stronger effect on the person's choice. Ideally, our experiment found out a number of things. Firstly, the experiment is going to be a test of the sense of the control group and of the treated group. We would like to test whether there is a statistical difference in percent of those who had a subliminal message and those who had not. We would also like to test to see if there is a difference in percentages of those who were told there was a subliminal message and those who were not told. The bar graph on the slide shows a prediction of our data. A few drawbacks to our experiment include external validity. We might be generalizing to other populations by only using college students at Santa Clara University. That being said, we may want to make our sample sizes slightly smaller. Another drawback is the students may want to talk about what they saw during break even though they are instructed not to. And lastly, the effect of treatment may be so small that testing the difference between the placebo and actual treatment could be difficult to achieve.